You will not typically go to a church and find women covering their head. Your hair is not enough of a covering. You need something on top of your head. Otherwise, God says, shave your head. But that's disgraceful. So cover your head. Why don't the men have to cover their head? Paul appeals to common sense. Judge for yourselves. Is it proper for a woman to pray to God with her head uncovered? I'm going to try and film this video really quickly because my baby is sleeping but she's about to wake up at any time. Hey guys, what's up? It is Sabrina here and welcome back to another video on my channel. Today I'm going to be giving you guys a brief video on why I cover my head when I pray, when I read my Bible, when I'm in church, and when I do videos like this. You guys will notice in past videos that I filmed about my faith, which I will put up in the cards, I'll link down below if you're curious, but I cover my head, particularly with this thing, every single time, and there is a specific reason for that. Today I'm gonna share that with you guys. What is head covering? Why do I cover my head? Well, let's first just read some scriptures that discuss it. We're gonna go to 1 Corinthians chapter 11, and let's just start from the beginning because it's actually titled Head Coverings here in my Bible. It says, now I commend to you because you remember me in everything and maintain the traditions even as I deliver them to you. But I want you to understand that the head of every man is Christ. The head of a wife is her husband and the head of Christ is God. Every man who prays or prophesies with his head uncovered dishonors his head. But every wife who prays or prophesies with her head uncovered dishonors her head since it is the same as if, it sh if, she if her head was shaven. For if a wife will not cover her head, then she should cut her hair short. But since it is disgraceful for a wife to cut off her hair or shave her head, let her cover her head. For a man ought not to cover his head, since he is the image and glory of God, but woman is the glory of man. For man was not made from woman, but woman from man. Neither was man created for woman, but woman for man. That is why a wife or a woman ought to have a symbol of authority on her head because of the angels. Nevertheless, in the Lord, woman is not independent of man, nor man of woman. For as woman was made from man, so man is now born of woman, and all things are for your God, for, are from God. Judge for yourselves. It is, is it proper for a wife or woman to pray to God with her head uncovered? Does not nature itself teach you that if a man wears long hair, it is a disgrace to him? But if a woman has long hair, it it is her glory, for her hair is given to her for covering. If anyone is inclined to be contentious, we have no such practice, nor do the churches of God. Here, we are commanded as women to cover our heads when we pray or prophesy. Now, what does that mean? Obviously, I'm sure we all know what prayer means, but what does prophesy mean? So in other parts of scripture, I'm not gonna to go to them right now, but I might put some verses up in the uh, screen or in the description box. But other parts of scripture, it describes prophecy in two ways. Either it was a kind of prophecy that was more prediction in the future, which we don't really have today in this church age because we have the full revealed word of God. The other type of prophecy is just telling forth the truth of God. Those are the two ways it's used in scripture. And I believe here it's speaking of just telling forth the truth of God. So what I'm doing right now in these videos, I am telling forth the truth of God. And that is why I'm covering my head. And when I read my Bible, I am worshiping before the Lord. If you think about it, prayer is a form of worship. And so is prophesying. Covering your head in churches today is almost completely eradicated. You will not typically go to a church and find women covering their head. Most Christian women don't anymore. First of all, I want to bring out, if you've noticed me reading, but every wife who prays or prophesies with her head uncovered, the word used for wife in this context was actually gunea or ginea, I forgot how, I don't know how it's pronounced in Greek, but that word is used interchangeably in scripture sometimes for wife and woman. So I believe that based on the context of the passage, this is not just speaking to wives, but to women in general. Also, this is ESV and other translations like the KJV, I believe the NASV, those are all women as well. So I don't think we should get caught up on those little things. But first of all, why have women stopped covering their heads? I've largely believed that second and third wave feminism have really influenced this because if you will go back even just 100 years into the past 200 years, every woman in every church had their head covered. This was just an understanding across the board for Christians. However, the feminists, because of what it symbolizes, which is submission to God, the feminists who are rampant on their mission to not obey God and to discard his authority, encouraged women, even Christians, to stop covering their head, to stop dressing modestly, to stop being a decent woman. And so I largely believe that our culture has influenced the church. 
And now it's come to the point where people don't even know that the Bible says to cover your head and they have no idea what these passages mean. So first I want to get into three common arguments I hear that people bring up when they say, oh, you know, we don't actually have to cover our head and these are from Christians. The first common argument I hear is that it was a cultural tradition back in Jewish days, therefore it doesn't apply to us. I've even heard academic scholars and theologians say this, and I just think that is not doing the text right because if you will see here, this is not speaking of some cultural tradition. And I know why they say that. They go to the first verse here. Remember me in everything and maintain the traditions even as I delivered to you. And then in the last verse in 16, it says, if anyone is inclined to be contentious, we have no such practice, nor do the churches of God. So they immediately say, oh, well, this is not for us. This is for them back then. It was just a tradition. It was a cultural thing. And, you know, they say that, oh, back then only prostitutes had their heads uncovered. So obviously Paul was going to tell the women in the church to cover their heads. But if we are really looking at the text here, the context is submission to God and to his command. It is not talking about cultural context this year. Also, he specifically says, praise or prophesize, not all the time. And if you're really gonna go back to Jewish tradition, women had their heads covered all the time. Another refutation I often hear is that 15 says, but if a woman has long hair, it is her glory for her hair is given to her for a covering. So people automatically say, well, oh, well look, that says her hair is a covering. That's all she needs. Well, let's look at this logically. If that was all she needed, why in the earlier verses here, in verse five and six, it says, but, but every wife who prays or prophesies with her head uncovered dishonors her head since it is the same as if her head were shaven. So clearly hair is not enough. And it goes on in verse six, for if a wife will not cover her head, then she should cut her hair short. But since it is disgraceful for a wife to cut her hair short or shave her head, let her cover her head. So you cannot go around that. Your hair is not enough of a covering. You need something on top of your head. Otherwise, God says, shave your head. But that's disgraceful. So cover your head. <laughs> the last thing I heard, this is a very weak argument, but people have said, well, if it's such an important scripture and doctrine, God would mention it in other parts of scripture, and he doesn't. I think the idea in the, of submission to God is mentioned all throughout the Bible. But again, because of Paul's language here, and he says, if anyone wants to be contentious, if anyone wants to make a big deal of this, we just have no other practice, nor do any of the churches of God. This is what we do when we pray and prophesy. If you will notice, it says the men are to not cover their head. The men are to leave their hair barren. If you're wearing a hat, take it down because their hair is not a glory and therefore does not need to be covered. So now that we've kind of pushed aside those terrible arguments for why we don't need to cover our heads, let's get into what this passage actually says. All right, guys, so if pick up your Bibles, let's do this together. So if you will notice in the beginning here, um, verse three, it says, but I want you to understand that the head of every man is Christ. The head of a woman is her husband and the head of Christ is God. So here he is laying out, I don't want to use the word hierarchy, but he's laying out the order of things. Woman has man as her head. Man has Christ as his head, and Christ has God as his head. A lot of women get offended when they hear that man is over them, the man is their head, we have to cover our heads, why don't the men have to cover their heads? Well, we'll get into that a little bit later. Women being under the head of man is no way inferior because to say that a woman is inferior for having man as her head is to say Christ is inferior to ha for having God as his head. And we know that Christ, God, and the Holy Spirit are all one. They all have the same amount of power. It's just that they have different roles. They have different functions. Father sends out the Son. The Son sends out the Holy Spirit and they function in this beautiful way. And that is in no way inferior to the woman. It's the way that God created the both of them to function as happily and healthfully and God glorifying as possible. Let's just get it all out of our heads that women are inferior to men. This is not what this passage is saying. It's saying that we all have our own function. Christ has his function, God has his function, man has his. Verse seven says, for a man ought not to cover his head since he's the image and glory of God, but woman is the glory of man. For man was not made from woman, but woman from man. Neither was man created for woman, but woman for man. That is why a, why a woman ought to have a symbol of authority on her head because of the angels. So I think when it says because of the angels, I think the angels are witnessing, they're watching us. And when we cover our heads, we show to the angels that we are in submission to God, that we care about what God has to say. And we are showing it outwardly, even in the privacy and quiet of our own room where nobody else will see us. It's not for man. It's not even really for our husbands. It is for the Lord that we cover our head. It says here that man 
is the image and glory of God, but woman is the glory of man. What does that mean? Well, I like to think of it this way. If men are the beer, women are the whiskey. We're the strong stuff. We are the concentrated form of the glory of God. Because if you think about it, man was created in the image of God and woman was taken from man and created in the image and glory of God as well. But woman has the beauty. Woman has the glory of her hair. Notice that a man's hair is not his glory. The woman's hair is her glory. We are covering our glory, our beautiful long glory. We're covering it in the presence of the Lord because we want to worship him. A woman can produce life from within her body. She doesn't even have to do a single thing when she's pregnant. She's just, she just eats and sleeps and there's a baby that grows. But the baby's own individual heart, their own blood, their own soul and spirit, it grows from within the woman. Men and women are all equal in God's eyes but I'm just trying to say that the function of the woman is such a special function we are the glory the concentrated glory of God God created you with your glory and he created head coverings so that we could show him submission to his authority Paul appeals to common sense judge for yourselves is it proper for a woman to pray to God with her head uncovered does not nature itself teach you that if a man wears long hair it is a disgrace for him but if a woman has long hair, it is a glory, for it is given to her as a covering. If anyone is inclined to be contentious, we have no such practice, or neither do the churches of God. So I'm not going to drag this out and make it longer than it needs to be. But hopefully I could just show you guys why scripture is teaching us to cover our heads. It is not a cultural thing. It is not something that we can argue by playing around with the words. It's clear here that God is using Paul to show us the God-given order and chain of command, if you will and how that should look within the church as well as at home. So it says here specifically, it doesn't say she covers her head when she's in church. It says when she prays or prophesies, I believe that is worship. So I believe when she's singing songs and that could be worship hymns, when she's speaking, like, I, like I'm saying, when I'm speaking, prophesying God's truth to you, I'm reading his word to you, even though I'm alone in my room with a camera on me, I am still covering my head because it is a symbol of authority. Uh, it is a symbol of submission to God's authority, whether I am married, whether I am unmarried, whether I'm a child, whether I'm an older woman. Really quick, on more of a practical note, I'm going to kind of show you all the head coverings that I have and kind of how I wear them. So like I said, I do not wear them 24-7 because it says here when she prays or prophesies. So I know that there's some verses that say never cease in prayer. And so some Christians out there take that to mean that we should always be covering our heads because we should always be in prayer. Well, I think that is a beautiful thing. And if you do pray all day long, absolutely. However, there's many times where I don't. And so I don't view it as a sort of legalistic thing. Like when I am intentionally praying and, and prophesying and reading the word of God and spending time in worship, then I will cover my head. What I'm currently wearing is from Garlands of Grace. I will link them down below because I absolutely love them. As you can see, it's just kind of like a little head wrap and it actually clasps back here underneath my hair. And there's just so many ways you can wear this more like a headband. You can pull this down and just have it more of just like full coverage. And I really like this with a baby. I have a 10 month old baby girl and she is constantly yanking at everything I have going on. So it's really useful to be able to cover with this and not have it slip off or be taken off. So that's one example. Um, what I used to wear a lot before I had a baby was a scarf. So this is literally just a scarf and I would place it like that on my head and then wrap it around like this. I absolutely love this. I felt like it was very, very covering. It would cover the majority of my hair, um, but obviously with the baby, she it pulls this off all the time, so I had to stop wearing it, but that's another example of what you can do. I have a thinner one here that just kind of sits on top. This one slips off a lot, but I do have it as an option. The most important thing about it is just to have it on your head as a symbol that you that you care to cover your head this is what i used to wear when i was younger and actually my baby girl wears now in church is this we just take this like that and kind of put it around her we even sometimes tie it in the back so it stays on her of course she's always being supervised she never has on alone but this is what she wears in church because even though she's 10 months i want to get her number one used to wearing things on her head and number two she's a she's a female these are just examples of course you can wear a hat you can whatever like be creative with it my hope is to just encourage women out there don't just do this because you heard it in this video or someone else is telling you do this because you've truly searched the word of god and see it for yourself pray about it do it in the lord i highly encourage you guys to read first corinthians chapter 11 the first 16 verses and to see what god is truly trying to teach us i hope you guys enjoyed and i will see you in the next one mm -hmm.